Hey. Hello, everybody. Thanks for waiting. Uh, Hello, hi, Shandy. everyone. Hi, Shons. Hi, Dungeon Matron. I see what you've been doing there, and uh, yeah, uh, you know what I think about the edible terrain, so maybe let's not go there. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mr. Thomas Pinnan, how are you, sir? I am pretty good. I've finally my vacation started, so the, the I have actually I did the I can do stuff like this. It's the the um uh, the weather is good. It's the the night last night in Finland. It's a I have ice cream. So what else could you want? Life is good. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm uh, sure that some of the people are here from the uh, more time tabletop group. So uh, uh, Facebook, Facebook group, sorry. So I'm pretty sure most of them are familiar with you. But uh, some of the people, especially from my uh, Discord, are more familiar with uh, tabletop RPGs. So uh, would you like to tell us a bit about yourself before we start? Okay, I'm Thomas Piren. I'm a game designer. I've been doing games for oh 27 years now. It's the uh, I've uh, worked on tabletop. It's the, the people probably in this chat room know me mainly for my work on the the Apple Games Workshop. I was the uh, designer of the the fifth edition rules of Realm of Chaos. Uh, I did the vampire counts for GW High Elves. Uh, several of the the campaign packs. I did Warhammer Siege. I did Mordheim, obviously one of the big box games I did for them. Uh, and of course, the Warhammer Fantasy Battle 6th edition. Uh, tons of other army books, worked on codices, hundreds of uh, White Wolf articles. I also have worked on video games. I've done mobile, I've done uh, PC, and I've done uh, console games. There I worked on Resident Evil. I worked with a little bit with Nintendo on the, the one of the Mario games. I worked at the, the with the EA on a lot of games like FIFA and the uh, Need for Speed. I was a lead designer there. I worked on Ubi with Ubisoft, uh, uh, at Remedy. Now I run a couple of my own game companies. So the the I am a uh, lifer when it comes to <laughs> games. I can't imagine doing anything else. That's, so that's a me. hell of a curriculum. <laughs> So, uh, and uh, I imagine that you, uh, since you've been doing games for uh, that long, I imagine that you started uh, playing games uh, way younger. So, uh, how did you get into gaming in the first place? Oh, uh, uh, as long as I can remember. I mean, the first game I published that I get paid for, I started my professional career at the ripe old age of six. What? I did, I did a little board game where you roll dice, and it was published in a local magazine, and they paid right. me. <laughs> Uh, something like three euros at that point. Is the, the, but anyway, hey, it, I was a little kid. Hey, it's for, the, six but, year, uh, for six years old, that's big money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the the but really, my fantasy science fiction gaming career started with the Dungeons and Dragons Red Box. Like I was so blown away that Elmore cover with the warrior and the red dragon fighting over treasure that I had to get it, and I really. I forced myself to learn English very well so I could understand the rules and play the game. And the I've never looked back since then. It's the uh, so really I, I think this is a very common story for a lot of game designers. It's the uh, Dungeons and Dragons, which of course then forces you to create a lot of your own content because you don't have just something you consume like with a video game. It's a really good um, sort of a school. For game designers, especially if you're dungeon master like I was, yeah, I never sure. want to be a player. I want to run the game. <laughs> so the uh, that's my start, and from there it was Ultima Four, uh, the the on 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 uh, Commodore sixty four, and the all the other classic games of that era, and then on the I played all kinds of uh, pen and paper games until I stumbled into Warhammer and got really heavily involved. It's the starting third and fourth edition. It's the uh, and the, the wrote a lot of um, uh, tactics articles and my own army lists. Uh, the internet at that point was something where you'd have to download emails and that would take hours just to download the emails. So I wrote them on the news groups and the Jervis Johnson, who was pro probably the first person at Games Workshop to be online, is the read really? them and really liked them, yeah, and sent me a ticket for an interview, and the rest is history. Nobody gets their jobs in games industry like that anymore. Like nobody else should ever think that that's a viable career path. It's just yeah, I mean, it was a very special time in the world that they, that was possible. But that's my story into gaming, and really, once you get into it professionally, you usually get more and more opportunities, provided what you do is good and is successful. Obviously. <laughs> 
it's a very self-selective career. And the average uh, employee in games industry lasts uh, lasts less than five years. Most of the people realize very quickly that it's not for them. So the people like me who stay for a very long time are a tiny minority. Is that five years in game design or five years in the gaming uh, industry in general? In the gaming industry in general. Oh, it's the end job programmer, uh, animator, artist, illustrator, uh, doesn't matter. It's the, it's not, I mean, to be honest, there are so many, so much easier ways to earn your living. <laughs> uh, a lot of people then realize that actually I can work from nine to five, earn a good money, and then I can be, have the games as hobby and really enjoy it. It's the, the, but for me, I couldn't uh, imagine having any other job. Yeah, I think it's uh, you've been immersed in this for uh, quite a long time, so yeah, uh, it's kind of become part of you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, to me, it's a it's in the same way like the the John Blanche told me he, he he can't picture himself as anything else as an artist. I mean, remember, like as you know, he just retired. Yeah. And he retired at 75, and that's only because of his health that he no longer could the, the, the go to the, the head office. It's the, the, but uh, uh, I think the retirement age, age is 63 now in UK, so he stayed 12 years past it and would have gone for another 12 years or as long as probably as he can hold a, a, a pen if he can. I am in the same way that the, I can't really think of doing something else. I've never, like desired another career it's the, the game design is what i do it's it's what i think about all the time yeah and i remember that uh, you had mentioned uh, way back i think it was in 2020 when you uh, mm. started uh, that uh, i think it was called project a at the time when uh, that uh, war game you were uh, starting to design and you were saying uh, like, look uh, Computer games and mobile games make good money, but uh, you want to do something uh, purely for the love of designing a good game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the the all the stuff that I do now for tabletop games, whatever it's the 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 stuff I've done for Mordheim, as the 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 I've done the, the couple of characters. I'm working on a couple of new warbands with the Italian company Grimforge. Obviously, Tacticon, of course, the big tabletop project I got going on right now, which is Trench Crusade. I could definitely, if money was my object, I would do more video games with my free time cost. <laughs> the money is so much greater there that it's not even comparable. But uh, I started with tabletop. It's something that I play. I still play it more than anything else. Is the I am I'm a D and D uh, DM all the time, and I obviously also uh, the the play board games, war games every chance I get. So the the uh it's what I feel it's the the um doing tabletop design is just that the the if you have these ideas in your head and you want to get them out it's the I can't I can't uh, describe it in any other way. Yeah. Uh, so could you t tell us a bit about the uh, game design process? Like, uh, where does a game start, and uh, how do you? Uh develop that idea um it usually starts with a like the the an image or a piece of text or an idea there has to be a a concept and usually for me it's a game world that draws me in okay. which then it's the the feeds into how could you interpret this world these characters into rules um there is a the the I always said that the, the when people talk to me about balance, it's the I said I can make you a perfectly balanced game, but none of you will ever play it. It's the, we have every game would be like chess. Don't don't get me wrong, I love chess and it's an important game, but if every game was like that, both sides are perfectly equal, and the the you eliminate the chance of randomness. It's the a story driven games like Mordheim is the would never get made. It's the because they are inherently subject to unbalances that comes from what is interesting about the game which is the, the difference between the characters and the factions and the different rules that then the different ways of playing that they present, uh, represent so uh, the process for me really is that the the is twofold it's the what are the worlds and characters and who is my audience like uh if i'm writing a game for kids 
you have to think about the how complex you want the rules to be, how long you want the sessions to be, how much you demand from the 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 fans, like as a modelers or painters, if it's a miniature game, for example. Uh, for example, Trench Crusade is very much a game aimed for people who love tabletop games. Uh, I am making it a modern game. It's because it's a new game. I can't expect people to memorize a 300, 400 page book. The core rules have to be quite elegant, but then the 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 grit and the the, the texture of the game comes from the uh, the campaign system, the progression, the the choices you make. I so it, yeah. um, so yeah, you think about the the what is the 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 world I want to represent to the players through the rules I write. And the, the who is my audience? That would be the, the beginning of the process. Okay, and uh, let's take for example uh, more time because uh, that was set in the uh, old world of Warhammer, and you had I think at yeah. the time you had about twenty nine years of uh, material to work from as a backstory. Yeah. Uh, but does that come also come with constraints? For example, uh, with more time, you had the uh, standard. Uh, uh, Warhammer rule set, which you added on to. Yep. So, uh, if, if you didn't have that for uh, to begin from, mm. is, was there anything in more time, for example, that you would have uh, done differently? Oh, yes. I mean, I would have written the rules from scratch. Is the And there are a lot of idiosyncrasies of the Warhammer system that I probably would have streamlined if I'd be making a game from scratch. But of course, the point of the Mordheim as a product, now we have talking slightly different game and a product was to act as a gateway an introduction to the Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Mm -hmm. So making rules that were hugely different from the main game of Warhammer would have made absolutely no sense for more time. It had to act as a part of the Warhammer universe, which meant also that the rules had to be very close to what the Warhammer was at that time. And then the innovation had to come within that space, like the, 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 the the system of the where I did, uh, for example, if you look at Necromunda, which was a very successful game, but its shooting rules and its rules for the the recovering its the, the from hits that didn't kill you were very clunky. So I streamlined all of those and I tried to like make it all as much re uh, to be read from the 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 miniatures. So that's why the stand is face down and knock down is the the, the face up. And then Rather than putting down counters or yeah, having tables, what have you? Right, yeah. Every miniature. Uh, the exploration system. I really wanted it to have real depth, but only require one set of dice rolls. So that's why the both the amount of weird stone and the exploration comes from a one set of dice that you roll, which was a the the I think it's nicely combined the the easy to understand and yet that there is tons of depth and variety. And once you gain ability to manipulate the exploration dice is there a lot of the, the depth and nuance into it as well. So the, uh, the the innovation had to come from there. But if I've done a rule set that bore no resemblance to Warhammer, I mean, and well, the Games Workshop wouldn't publish it. Why would they? It would be stupid. Yeah, because you, you wouldn't be able to uh, draw new people in and the people who were already in there would not uh, go to it either because why learn new rules, yeah? Yeah, and even worse, if it was successful, it would divide your fan base. You would have two okay, rules yeah, fighting and the fans arguing which one is better. And that's the last thing a company wants is to do, have a its own fan base fighting within itself. They do it anyway, but you don't want to encourage it. <laughs> so uh, in a, an interview you gave last uh, Thursday, you mentioned one point which takes us back to balance. Uh, you mentioned that uh, balance is important, but it's not the most important thing. No. So, uh, to what extent is balance important, and uh, where is it important? Um, well, it's it's important in a way that the, the every faction you make in a game must have at least an, a chance of winning, even in ex as extreme as they, they say the halfling team in Blood uh, Blood Bowl. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes they win. <laughs> it, it, the, if the game is so unbalanced that there is uh, that it's already you've lost before you start, and there is zero percent chance of them winning, then why would you play? But then that there is that small chance of winning, even with the weakest team, it's then there is a lot of glory. Like I, I beat the orcs with halflings. Now, how funny is that? Uh, 
the the so uh the balance is also important that if you want there to be tournaments then there has to be uh, enough of um uh, how would i say it's the the um uh, between the different factions there has to be enough uh closeness in their power level that a a tournament rules rather can bring them more or less aligned with with simple changes um you want for your main factions like the ones you know are going to be popular they must have a reasonable chance against the most other forces uh and the if you're making a tournament game the one that's meant purely for competition then the the, the task is very different then you need to sacrifice flavor color and the the, the fun uh, special case rules for the sake of the balance and you and you really honestly if you want a balanced game you bring the the, the the forces as close to each other as possible it's the to avoid the 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 one side becoming dominant but of course then you lose all that which draws us into this hobby which yeah, is the, all the, the texture and the uh yeah, my yeah. Fluff, yeah basically. Also, yeah, but also you want them play differently. You want the goblins to be cowardly but numerous. You want the elves to be fast and skilled and high morale but fragile. You want the orcs to be tough but belligerent and fight with themselves. Um, and the the uh, in this I believe that the rules can also tell a story. Like I'll give you an example as a game designer approach. Let's say that you have an orc who has a like a uh, a gun that the the Gatling gun. Now, I can, obviously, as a game designer, I can calculate the average damage it does on a round. So I could simply say, you roll, let's say it hits on force and always kills one opponent, as an example. So I could simply say, you roll one dice and you roll four or more and you kill one opponent. But actually, what you want to do is that you want to say that, okay, it shoots a lot of times, so it's super inaccurate. So let's say you roll three dice. And if you roll two or more ones for rolling to hit, it jams, or ex if it's all threes, it explodes, but then the it hits on a three plus, for example. I'm just giving you examples. So you arrive more or less on the same probability. So you kill on the average as the uh, same number of enemies, but then just shooting the gun with the orc that is prone to jamming and the, the, the fires tons of bullets is entertaining. It's a story that the rules tell, even though it would be much more straightforward and clearer just to say okay roll one dice and one four plus you kill one opponent yeah that makes so sense. it's all the the uh the rules can sometimes have more complexity if it's in the service of the immersion of the game okay we have a good point here from scatter terrain if all the classes are basically the same it would make things quite boring why not yeah. just have one class at that point yeah, exactly. Like I said, I can make you a perfectly balanced game. Everybody has human stats. Everybody costs the same. Everybody has access to the same equipment. The game is perfectly balanced. I will make you a scenario where actually you play twice, because both get to start. So then you both have the same forces, and it's always <laughs> the same scenario. But who would play that? It's balanced. It's perfectly balanced. Like, nobody can tell me that's as balanced as... Well, it is as balanced as you can. Tell. Only thing that would affect the balance is the randomness of the dice, but since that's the same for both of them, then it's all about your pure skill tactically. But who would play that game? Nobody. So, uh, I had another question, uh, since you mentioned tournament games. Uh, I noticed that uh, over the last uh, few years, it seems to be a trend. It's not just a games workshop thing, but uh, in quite a lot of games. Uh, random, random elements seem to be... Uh, getting uh, stripped down so for example uh in uh, warhammer fantasy you had that thing with uh panicking units which uh, you know get in the way of your other units and stuff like that and uh, yep. that was taken out in uh, later editions yep. <coughs> definitely in of sigmar so what was that part of the reason just to make it uh, more tournament friendly or what, was there some design yep. principle behind that of course, I wasn't at Games Workshop at that time, Misty, so I can, for, well, I'm meeting Jervis in a couple of weeks, I can ask him for the, because he did the, the rules. Ooh, okay. it's, I think it's a combination of the streamlining the rules, so it's more accessible to new generations of players, it's because a Warhammer Fantasy Battles uh, rulebooks were quite beasts. They were beasts on purpose, because the, 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 at that point the target audience was a hardcore hobbyist. Um, 
And the other one is that the, the I do suspect that the tournament campaign and competitive play it's the, the it's much easier to to for Games Workshop to run events like that if the 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 randomization is its role is toned down is the the competitive players like to uh, calculate probabilities. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm. It, I guess it, it did take uh, its own uh, time. So if you need, if if you can strip thirty minutes of a game, say, then you can fit more games in a day. So yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 none of it is inherently wrong. I mean, uh, I, it would be hypocritical for me to 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 uh, to to uh, criticize tournament gaming. I mean, I played in a hell of a lot of tournaments. I won quite a few. <laughs> it's the, I am competitive. It's the the. Uh, it's not a wrong way to play a game, but like I said, it's the Mordheim was never designed to be a more, uh, for example, to be a tournament game. It was meant to be a storytelling game and a game where uh, you triumph against the odds. And the, yeah, it's the things in Mordheim can go very badly for you. But there is a reason for that is that the, the lows in Mordheim are really low, which means that when you succeed, you do the diving charge with your troll slayer and you stop the vampire by jumping down and you roll one under your initiative and then you hit the vampire and you use your monster slayer skill and you take it out and yes that feels sweet you will remember that experience the rest of your life because it is so hard to do that yeah. in more time successfully uh so uh that's what i wanted to give to the players not a game that the the uh, there is cash prices on tournaments, and the the, the people are tweaking their their, their, their warbands to perfection. That wasn't the what I wanted to achieve with that game. Lots of tournaments are played with Mordheim. I mean, the when I was just in Italy, it was splendid, great game, an incredibly well run and extremely tight. Uh, but that wasn't the the uh, how would I say the 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 when we are speaking about Mordheim and games like that, it's the that was not the main function that I had in mind when I was designing the game. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the rules do create some uh, really interesting characters, you know, the uh, marksman with one eye, three fingers, and a wooden leg, and uh, stuff like that. Yep. But uh, speaking of it, by the way, uh, the, because there seems to be a really, really, really strong uh, more time community in there, is that uh, kind of a larger community, or are there larger communities elsewhere? Um. The, the Mordheim community just amazes me. I mean, again, and this is no slight on Necromunda, but you look at that the main Mordheim group is 25,000 people, which is bigger, quite a bit bigger than the, the main Necromunda group, It's the, the uh, which is actively supported game. It's the, and if you then consider the age of Mordheim, like if nobody is more surprised than me that it's A, it's still going, and B, it's going so strong, and C, it seems to be getting stronger. Like if anything, the like the people it's drawing in, their numbers are increasing. Um, I imagine it's it must offer something that no other game, it's the the offers. It's the otherwise. I mean, games don't live uh, with a uh, without the community. Like sure. the only thing that means. The game is alive as long as the, 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 the players are there. And since the players are there and their numbers seem to be increasing and there are all these incredible events being run around the, the world, it's the uh, it's giving people something that they are not getting anywhere else. It's the That's the only reason why a tabletop, unsupported tabletop game would have tens of thousands of adherents around the world, even for it's now 20... Uh, 24, I think it's, four, it turns 24, 24 this year, yeah. It's just amazing, absolutely amazing. Let's see. Yeah, I, I, I was surprised because I was doing the uh, math last weekend. It was like, yeah, I have colleagues who are uh, younger than more time. It's like, all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's the, um, and uh, I, I am, I am probably the most surprised person in the world about it. It's not because I am super proud of it, and I think it's a very, very high quality product. Oh, you should be proud of it. To mix, fix like every game. But you look at the combination of the art, the groundbreaking models, the 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 lore, the the the, the background is the the um, and um, yeah the rules. Uh, it's the hell. people wouldn't play it if if it didn't scratch Obviously. some kind of itch for them. It's the, the we are not the, the, the there isn't enough masochists to play games that they don't like. So the 
Uh, the, and the, when you, I go to the events, is the people playing, the, the ex excitement is palpable. It's the, and I think there are multiple reasons. I, I can guess to some of them, but it's still, it's absolutely amazing. It's the, it's became a classic game for, for, for multiple reasons, I suspect. So what, what do you think are the uh, main reasons? Well, I do think like um, it is now, especially because the game's take on the art and presentation is very hard, sort of a high art. So it's grown with us. Like you can be a lot of the, the our games and hobbies when we look back when we were teens and you'll go back and look at them and you're like, uh, a little embarrassed that it's a, it's a little bit kiddie or a bit, a bit, blah, blah. you can't really get into it. Mordheim doesn't suffer from that. It's the, you can be uh, middle age or older and still be enthralled by the all the art that they the I think it's the artistically when I'm talking about purely artistic merit I don't think that the I, I am hard pressed to think of another tabletop game where it came together so well uh yeah it's the the all this influence on Hieronymus Bosch and the the Durer and the the other the the artists from the Middle Ages is the and the 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 Blanches and Karl Kopinskis and John Wigley's and the others art. Um, yeah, and I love that the internal art is is all designed to look like woodcuts and uh, prints. Yeah. Yeah, I also think that the this new age has really helped Mordheim because Mordheim table is like none other anywhere on the tabletop space. Like the meteor destroyed city is super distinctive and attractive, but when the game came out, it was very difficult for any hobbyist to build build anything like that. But now with three D printing, the new materials that are available, the the all the new uh, the the kits that the people can use, uh, is the it's much easier for people to see really 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 great Mordheim tables, and I think that's one thing that's really in its favor. I think that the the low fantasy setting and now with the, the 3D printing and Etsy and the independent creators doing alternative models means that there is actually, while there is obviously no official model support for Mordheim, there is actually a hell of a lot of models. It's the, the that the, the if you want to put out together a Mordheim war, war band, there are just an amazing miniatures coming out True all the time. So I think this is the the combination with the the with of course with the game itself. It's the um, it's um, it's 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 got so much of that old school grit that if you are now very used to the the modern, very streamlined uh, and very campaign light, because almost all the games that come out now their campaigns are super lightweight on purpose so that the people could quickly get into it. But once you've done that and you want to bite into something that's got more grit, then Mordheim has that all that equipment, all those weapons, all those armor, the exploration, the, the experience, the skills, the spells. And then you have all the stuff that was done in the Town Crier and the, the, the elsewhere on the Fanatic. And of course, the fan base is producing its own material all the time. Um, there is a lot of depth it's the you can literally if you play Mordheim every day you can if you wish to experience something new or start collecting a new warband or find some new model it's the the because the at the end of the day a the fan base since it's this large and so active means that it will outproduce everything is the we in design studio could have never produced all this material that came out it's the, the uh, since the community took the game over. I think that uh, you had mentioned at one point that uh, Mordheim was the first game uh, from the studio to be uh, play tested externally. Would that yes. have something to do maybe with uh, you know the community building because uh, they were uh, the whole community was involved uh, at a very early mm. stage in the game? Yeah, I mean, I think that was part of it. I think the other part was that it was also the first game to go to the fanatic, which actively encouraged fandom to 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 contribute their own rules towards the game and yes. since that was right in its root it's the the fan base always got used to this it's it's much more acceptable in the Mordheim groups around the world to accept a uh, content from somewhere else than from GW design studio uh, so it's always been there. So it's the, the there is a high level of acceptance of the the uh, fan based uh, made material. Um, 
and then there is always the core game, which the the offers a how would I say a reasonably even ground for the warbands if you don't misuse them. Because Mordheim is a game that if you only care about winning, there are ways to maximize that. But you will find very soon that you have no, uh, nobody to play against because <laughs> the, 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 nobody is having fun. And you are not going to have fun because the, you are playing mono warbands. Is that every model does the same thing, whether it's cave and slings or whatnot. It's the, uh, and I think that the people just uh, play the Mordheim in a way that I hope, perhaps partly because some of those loopholes, that once they've tried it and, and, and figured out that, nope, this is actually boring. I want to have a colorful, varied, interesting warband that I can do lots of different things with. It's the, the that that's much more alluring than the just trying to win at any cost. Yeah, I remember the uh, sling firing squad was. A... <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's funny because the the only reason why the sl sling spam is in the game that none of my playtested testers tried it, so it never came up <laughs> it's the, during the playtesting because they were they were having fun with the the game as is. Uh, by the way, I've got the uh, Geoff Taylor's uh, cover on screen, and uh, I th this is a fantastic piece of art because it... I've only uh, recently uh, had a good deep look in at it because uh, once you have a high-resolution picture, it's very different from seeing the uh, picture in the box. It's not just yeah. the uh, size, it's also the print and stuff, but there are yeah. just so many details onto it. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I have the original painting, as you know. Right now, I've loaned it to the the the, the Finnish Museum of Gaming. So the high oh, well, quality right. pictures came from the museum photographing it. In the case oh, that the painting yeah. is damaged, they would have to restore it. It's the the so that's why you have these high high result cost. It was never scanned at this quality at Ga back at the Games Workshop. This is thanks to the the Finnish Museum of Gaming. Oh, okay, nice. But I did have a couple of questions about it. For, uh, for yeah, example. go ahead. Uh, first up, what, what's this bottle meant to uh, represent? The one with the three birds on it? Yeah, it's the those are the classic colors of the the of the the, the balance of the red uh, red white and black. It's the you could see it as a good evil and the the neutrality in between them. It's the you could see it is the the there are the three dragons of the legend. Is the the uh, representing the, the three aspects of the humanity. Um, the all this is like comes from a several symbolistic sources, okay. uh, but I am I don't want to tell exactly what we were talking when we were making this painting because we want the fans to come up with their own own interpretations of the symbolism. Now, some of the symbolism in the uh, Morheim book you can find in the books like. You might remember that there are these pieces of paper with numbers in the in the in interior. Yes, those yes. come from uh, Kabbalistic and the 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 uh, esoteric books. They are magical and they have messages in them. But quite a lot of stuff it's the the is there to be left as a mystery that you as a viewer it it should engage your mind. Is the like uh, and some of these things was changed. Like that glass box with a pig eating a fish eating a cockroach. It originally had a baby with the eyes and mouth sewn shut. Oh, but we didn't really want to do... Uh, we wanted to keep, like, uh, harming children away from the art just to... Uh, we, didn't, we didn't think that that was the the, the area of the game that, or the, the, the artwork or the law that, that was worth for us. There is nothing interesting there to tell, and it isn't really something that the, any of us were into. So we replaced it with the 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 pig and the 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 fish and the cockroach. Um, you can see just some faint lines li lines of the baby still on the the, the back. Yeah, I, I I think I see here. Yeah. There's yeah. a like a correction mark yeah. just yeah. by the pig state. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yes. So that's the that's where the baby was. Uh, <laughs> but I think that was a completely right decision to to replace it. But the symbolism, uh, I can uh, I'll happily answer questions. But some of them I will say that the, we want you each one of you to figure out yourself what you wanted to symbolize. But go ahead, ask ask away. Okay, I think you had mentioned that the uh, fish heads that are prominent, uh, I think fish are a common theme in more time. I think you had mentioned that was uh, like uh, uh, symbolism for the soul, yeah? Yep, it's one of the interpretations. Like uh, John Blanche wanted a unifying visual symbol. 
and the fish was the one that really came up. Uh, it's my sort of when we talked about it, I said to remember that the 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 Christ said that he's the fisherman of souls. That was the 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 parable that he gave of himself. And I'm not. This is not a religious painting. By as you as I'm sure you said, <laughs> the game is about the pagan gods. But the the since the Mordheim really is a battle for the soul of the empire. Like who becomes the emperor? It's the and the, the and of course Weirdstone is the the symbol of power and power always corrupts. Like there is actually in the end no good way to use use Weirdstone. And if you look at the Warhammer's history, it causes a lot of damage. It's the the uh, in the end it's the, the starts the vampire wars, for example. Uh, so the 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 fear, but the fish really is the the uh, the visual symbol of Mordheim. As much as it is to me, it's the sort of the the representing the souls that are being fought over. Okay, and uh, there's this kind of I don't know if it's a cat person or a person in a cat mask at the uh, yep. center here. Was that supposed to yep. be some kind of beastman or cultist or? No, I think that was added. It's the the just the, there is a multiple interpretations in different cultures what cat means. Is sometimes it's good or bad luck. Uh it's again like we were looking at a lot of the medieval paintings, where the size of the character or what they appear as is the the, the like if there are animal aspects, they are not literal interpretations. They symbolize something. So that's why like a king is very large in a medieval painting. Yeah. And the the, the 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 peasants are small, uh, and it isn't because the king was huge. <laughs> it shows the, his his importance. So the the uh, I see uh, the the this person. It's the more likely this would be how I would interpret is that it is a human that has a some aspect to them that the that the cat symbolizes. So the if the the uh, Jeff Taylor was a medieval painter, he would have painted. That person with a cat's head to tell, give a clue to the viewers of the painting who in Middle Ages would instantly understand what it means. All right. <laughs> or if you want, it can be a a a literal interpretation of a cat-headed beastman. That's I think that's the beauty of this painting. It is we didn't publish a guide to this painting. We gave it to the the, the fans and they can they can look into it. Fig figure it out yourself, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. What it means to you. Okay, and uh, this character in black in the uh, bottom right corner, is that someone in particular? Because Yeah, it, it is it's the, the, the a person from the design studio. All right. I am I am actually I am actually going to leave that to the, 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 the fans to try it out try to find out. Of course the time has now passed. But it was this, this was actually the, the and you will find this in a lot of the games workshop out of this period. That really? quite a few characters. It's the the uh, like for example the 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 character of the uh, of the 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 Luther Wolfenbaum, your guide in Mordheim book. Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, that's Dave Gallagher, the pair, the artist who made it. It's his own 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 picture. Really, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I still look at the, 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 the if you find a photo of a Dave that time. It's the it's 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 hundred percent Dave. Which is a nice little self-insert, this kind of way, and this is the kind of stuff that I really love that happened in Mordheim. That the artists um, intersected it with the real world in a meaningful ways. It's the which I enjoy, which is again why I think it's partly why the game has lived on so long. Yeah, I I kind of love this. Uh, how would you call it? Uh, kind of playfulness, both with the art and with the uh, references that. It seems to have been a hallmark of uh, games workshop in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the uh, that's the kind of artists that were there, and of course, the John Blanche being the art director. It's the uh, he is a lot of, and this is no slide again. A lot of people who illustrate sci-fi and fantasy are illustrators, mm -hmm. and this is not a slur. Beautiful illustration is great, like very photorealistic usually very high degree of skill i love it uh but john blanche's style is more art in the same way if you look at the the painting of uh say a uh uh who would be a good example van gogh mm -hmm. it isn't photo photo uh graphic photo real 
and yet the paintings have impact. It's because it's art, it's not uh, illustration. So at that point, it's the, the there was much more of what I would say art there. And again, I want to stress, I am not looking down on illustrations. It's the, uh, most of uh, my, my favorite pieces of art is the art illustrations, but there is a difference in the approach. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, there there are tools to uh, convey different things, and uh, with with regards to uh, John Blanche's art, it's like the uh, there's always so much texture and uh, depth you can almost feel the pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the I'm a, 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 a proud owner of several originals that he's the 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 deemed to the the me worthy of the the be uh, being there there the uh, guardian. And the the in real life you can see that multi layered approach. I mean, I have one here. Ooh. It's the, it's the uh, let me see this redemptionist painting. Oh, wow, it's okay. the once you see it in the real life, you see all the like the splotches of color. They are all very dark, three dimensional in the art. It's the, the so there is a depth, a real physical like uh, depth to the art. So you see the layers. And it creates this sort of a very three-dimensional feel to it, uh, uh, and it's with the mixed techniques and the the using inks and uh, and the the uh, uh, the actual like the the acrylic paints to create these layers. Um, that's a very different approach. I mean, nowadays everything is digital, and gorgeous pieces are being produced with that, but it's different. Again, different tools. Uh, you're going to get different effects. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Scatterian is saying art being about evoking the emotional response is definitely my preferred art style. Yeah, mm -hmm. again, it's a different uh, tool from illustration. Yes. And uh, Dungeon Matron is saying I love composite art where the overall picture contains other pictures. Yeah, that's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think that if you are into. Uh... The kind of game that the 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 Mordheim or the others that I worked on are, you tend to have the kind of mind like I do that really appreciates that style of the, the art. I mean, for the mainstream audience, now I'm talking about like stuff like EA does or Activision does. Uh, you need a much more straightforward uh, type of art that there is. This nuance would probably confuse most of the really mainstream consumers. And that's fine. It's the, the not every game has to be for everybody. I've been quite I've done a lot of mainstream games and I'm quite quite happy in the tabletop space to do games for a uh people who have a bit more of a similar mindset, mindset that I do. Okay, uh Quest Bortain is saying the painting reminds me of Bush. Yeah, I think most of the uh artwork in there is uh, very heavily inspired by that. <laughs> yeah, oh it's the Durer Bosch is probably like the, the John Blanche's all time favorite artist. Is the uh, with the the I would say probably with the the uh, who's the great Renaissance painting from the Netherlands? It's the the not uh, obviously the the uh, for heaven's sake. It's the the I, I'm getting really old. It's the I will have to cheat. Uh, no, no. Uh, it's the, the uh, Rembrandt, of course. Rembrandt is the one that he probably mentions more than anybody else as a sort of a pinnacle of art. Because Rembrandt, of course, was close to perfect on everything. Like, it's the, the one of the greatest artists humanity has produced in its entire uh, existence. It's the his originals are beyond stunning. It's the like mind blowingly good stuff. Yeah, I uh, enjoyed watching, uh, viewing some of them in the uh, Rex Museum. Yeah. They are definitely worth experiencing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the treasures of humanity. Definitely. Uh, Ertman Brick has a good question here. Uh, how different is video game in, is the video game industry in terms of design compared to the tabletop? Uh, well, it's much... In some ways, because the money that every game takes is so big, the responsibility is super heavy. Because if the game doesn't succeed, somebody just lost anywhere up to 250 million. That's a lot of money. Uh, they are very expensive to make and they are getting more expensive. On the other side, is the, the between you and the consumer, is the, there is the programmers, the 3D artists, 2D artists, UI designers, UX designers. 
uh, audio guys, animators, like in when you are playing a tabletop game, I am literally talking directly to you. I mean, of course, the editor fixes some of the horrible English I might have put in. But in essence, the rules that I write down, they have to work on their own merits when you play. And the fiction I write, the lore has to work and not bore you. So you are much more exposed is the, the, when you are doing tabletop game because you don't have any excuses then because the video game can fail in multiple ways. You can do a good job in, in design, but if the coding doesn't work and the game has lots of bugs, then it's screwed no matter how good the, the game is. Uh, so the the um, but the 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 job of a mechanics design that I do is very similar because at the end of the day, what is a a a real time game except except a turn based game where the turns are really 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 short, and if you miss your turn, it's this. so imagine a shooter and I've done several shooters like the Medal of Honor, it really is the same rules. How much damage does the bullet uh, do? How uh, the 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 Quickly does it shoot? What's the, the, the accuracy? Like how much does it the, the wave and spread? It's the, the um, trajectory of the bullets. These are all stuff that a in tabletop games you often don't write rules for all of them, but all the same rules apply. You have probabilities, the chances, the modifiers. And the only difference is that instead of me asking you as a player to interpret the 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 the, the probabilities by rolling dice, it's the a programmer will do that for you and based on the the inputs that the player gives so my job is not hugely different between the two but i do like the immediacy of the tabletop because uh i uh i can also fix the, if i if there's a problem i can fix it myself if the code crashes i can only go and smack the programmer that they they, they fix your code is i found this bug it's the the it's so nice to be able to fix problems uh, yourself, um, but they're different. And and I'm going, don't get me wrong, it's the I am terribly proud and happy. It's the the for work on the video games as well. It's the the uh, I love making games, all kinds of games. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, you mentioned that uh, you're also a long term uh, dungeon master. Yeah, Have you ever yeah, published yeah. anything for role-playing games apart from uh, apart from uh, war games? Uh, I have, but I was not supposed to. I was under oh. an NDA, so I had to do it under pseudonym. So I have made a uh, one book for a major role-playing company. It's the under pseudonym. It's the the because I really wanted to do that, but uh, I was under contract not to do any game design work except for the company that was employing me at the time. Luckily now, the company I work uh, I work with is, the, well, one of them, I'm a, one of the founders, the other is the, I'm one of, also one of the, the uh, original members, so uh, I can spend my free time doing, uh, as long as it's not video games. It's the, <laughs> I'm able to play games on my own. But yes, I have. I have made a, a, a RPG book as well. And I've also helped with the, the I've written articles and help some of my friends who work on that space. It's the, but yes, um, I have. Okay. So we might want to uh, try to dig that up somewhere. <laughs> but in the meantime, uh, bringing up some of your uh, uh, painted miniatures from Instagram. Yeah. I think you do a lot of painting for your uh, games of Dungeons and Dragons as well. Yeah, I do. It's the... I'm sort of, I love the spectacle of doing the combat with miniatures. So, and it's given me an excuse because, uh, I mean, I consider myself very poor painter because I, for seven years, I walked past the heavy metal cabinets every day. Yeah, I, I can see how that would give anyone a complex. <laughs> yeah, and you just go that, oh man, I'm so bad. And then my housemates, of course, when I started the games workshop, is the, the, I definitely didn't make much money. So my housemates were Ian Pickstock, who was easily good enough to win uh, heavy metal. He was the, the famous for his Treadheads articles. It's the, he was in the White Wolf. And then there was the um, the 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 uh, 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 Torben Schnorr from the heavy metal team. Oh, okay. No, no yeah. pressure at all, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then nobody ever did anything but accept encourage me like the, the the people these master painters are lovely people but then 
you go and the, you hang out with Mike McNay and you go, hey, what's up? Oh, not much. I'm painting the reflections on the eyes. So I'm painting on the ID. That all scene it reflecting from his eye and you're just, oh, man. Okay, well, I'm trying to get a somehow a one even code somewhere so that it <laughs> wouldn't look terrible. But now that the, I'm doing for D&D and there is no pressure for, it's it's for the enjoyment of me and my game group, it's the, uh, the meditative, because the pressure is on. So the meditative side of painting models, it's the the I find it incredibly relaxing and 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 it's so enjoyable. I love completing projects. So every every model is a project. So you finish it, I get a huge sense of satisfaction and the happiness that I know that I can use it in my games. But yeah, uh, this is one of the latest ones I'm doing. These because I, I can't get the uh, green orcs right, and I said bollocks to it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna make them orange, and I've been painting lots of orange orcs lately. Okay. But I mean, it does look amazing, especially the uh, color variations here and the uh, glow on the chest. Those look yeah. really interesting. Yeah, I mean, of course, I picked some uh, stuff up. There's another down. If you go down, there is another orange orc there. This the, one the, the, the war boss. Yeah, it's the, that looks the of course. When you are working with such incredibly talented miniature painters all the time, you something rubs off, and they talk to you, and you listen, and you learn. So there are tips and tricks from them. Uh, but I've also like really paid attention lately on what John Blanche says about miniature painting. Because while well, John Blanche was one of the the golden, uh, no, he didn't win the Golden Demon Slayer sword. He won the Master Painter Award at the eighty seven Games Day, which was the highest honor back then. And he's been, and of course, he's the founder of the modern miniature painting. So I've been listening to a lot, very carefully, what he says to me about the miniature painting. Uh, and I really think that finding your own style and the the uh, paying attention to the areas of color rather than individual details. Okay. So in here you can see that the there are the the black horns on the head of the creature and then the the attached brown horns. So they are different elements. So I didn't paint them in the same colors. Uh, this is kind of stuff that the the he he is really into. It's the, the when it comes to miniature painting. So uh, what I lack in the technical ability, and I am very aware, it's the, the that I can't I can't paint like eyes well, and I never will. And it's okay. I can do things that work in different ways. Oh, they sure work. I mean, this this looks amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but of course, this is also I realize that the it's a matter of the the who I am uh, comparing myself to. It's the the and if it's the if it's a, a golden demon winner or Mike McVeigh or whatever or, or anybody from the uh, the 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 uh, heavy metal team then no you you will not compare favorably but then they have dedicated their entire lives exactly to, yeah I mean that, that's what that's, yeah. that's their day job kind of thing yeah yeah and In the same hobby. way uh, if I asked would have asked Mike McVeigh that okay you need to write the 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 lore of the vampires and all the rules and make sure that the the that there is something new and fresh and all these bloodlines is the uh, it wouldn't have been fair for him because he has dedicated his life to become good at miniature painting while I've dedicated my life to game design but we can still double and they have fun in the each other's spaces for sure yeah. Uh, yep it's a greater demon from D D the Marlith yeah. These, these things are nasty, 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 nasty. Did you actually use this on your players? Uh, not yet. It's the, not yet. They, are <laughs> high, high they are not high enough level. This this thing would shred them to pieces. Yeah, I always think it's funny to uh, you know uh, leave one on the shelf behind behind me or uh, dragon yeah. or something. Just you know, yeah. it might not happen, but it's a possibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the gold dragon cost my very few players are actually out and out evil, so very few people will ever fight gold dragon, but it was super fun to paint. Okay, I really like the way the uh, texture and the wings came out here. Yeah, yeah, it's just a uh, a, a there is this the, the reddish brown, and then mm -hmm. there is a uh, 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 on the bottom. And then there is a heavy dry brush of a, there is a very particular color that the, the scale 75 does. That's not gold. It's sort of like leathery gold, like right. a leathery gold. And it works perfectly. 
It's the, it looks it looks like it's gold and leather like the the gold dragon would have on its wings. But yeah, I have great models nowadays with the 3D printing. Oh, and I also do the the pictures. I'm a married man, so I'm not trying to to, to <laughs> worry any, anybody. It's the the but I love weightlifting. It's the, and the that's sort of what it. Yeah, also it's the, yeah, oh, yeah. This is one of my favorites. Say. <laughs> I like the grotesque and humorous combination, like like the the, the if you uh, scroll the the uh, other pictures, you still can see that uh, the other one, next one, is the, he's scratching his butt. <laughs> find it all that kind of stuff hilarious, um, and I also find that yeah, there you go. It's the and I also find that when there is a texture mm -hmm. like that, it's because I am not very accurate painter. But I think I have some eye for color. So the 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 texture gives me texture does all the de fine detail, like you can see the folds of the skin that I couldn't paint myself, that a great painter would paint. It's the I can just play with the colors on top of it. It's the so I really appreciate sculpts like this. So I guess apart from uh, finding your own style, your own style, it's also a question of uh, learning what your strengths are and playing to them. Yeah, and finding uh, miniatures that work with your style. Like, I've never, ever been able to paint a Space Marine, because Space Marines are very much about high degree of technical skill that you get even coats, and the, the all the edgy, edges are highlighted, and the, the, uh, that's just not me. But I can I can paint you a really ugly giant. So, <laughs> like this one. I like the face. I mean, uh, it doesn't. Uh, the face is ugly, but uh, I really like the way it's painted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the and, and a hill giant is supposed to be ugly. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so yeah, it's the, the there is the uh, the green. Uh, yeah, that's the the I did a another greater demon. It's the the. Uh, but I am quite proud there is the, the storm giant, the green one in the oh, middle. Oh, yeah, one second. This one, yeah? Yeah, uh, yeah. that one. This, I, I actually was pretty pretty happy with. It's got a presence, and it's got this nice, like a, um, how would I say, like a, the hints of the warriors of the antiqu antiquity. And I like the slain dragon. And all the oh, yeah, that, yeah, I'm coming. just noticing yeah. it now. Yeah, it's the ghost. The, the, the giants and the dragons are great enemies in D&D. &D. So it does look very imposing. Yeah, it's the so that was uh, fun. And like I said, I find something that works for me and I no longer stress that I'm not as good as the the people around me. It's the there is some advantages in growing old that you may be uh, inferiority complexes is the tend to get less when you realize that <laughs> nobody can be good at everything. Um, but yeah, it's the. Uh, but also, I paint for the when I'm playtesting uh, tabletop rules. I also, uh, I quite often also play with just uh, unpainted models or buttons when I just have to quickly try something. I just don't have time. Yeah, I, the, I, 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 know, try, I, know <laughs> I try to have painted models whenever I can. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that uh, you have situations where uh, you have to play test something where the model doesn't actually exist yet. <laughs> Yeah, 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 all the time, all the time. It's the... Okay, and that, that reminds me, uh, I remember that uh, for uh, uh, for Tactica, I think one of your uh, earliest uh, statements on that was, okay, I want to be able to uh, play a game where I just take all the miniatures I have and put them on the table. Oh, yes. So, uh, uh, Tactica I wrote, I didn't come up with a completely new and unknown fantasy races for the simple sake that I don't own a miniature company <laughs> and the, the paying for the sculptors to do like several big armies of unique miniatures would cost a lot of money that the, the uh, that's not the point is the, the so I wanted that this is a game anybody who has any fantasy miniatures can play so and of course there is their own unique twist to the elves and the the uh ogres and the the uh, the, the spirits and giants and pirates, it's the, the uh, and orcs. But in general, it's the I wanted it that the, the you can play this game uh, with the models that you have on your shelf. It's the, the uh, and that was always the plan. But I did do other unusual things, like I combined 
the 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 like the the one of the armies is orcs and uh, sorry the the dwarfs and giants dwarfs and giants yeah the yeah, they, they, they alliance and that the 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 elves have like the 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 uh, night and uh, the light and dark elves live in the same society and it's just that during day the light elves is the 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 run the uh, run the air uh, kingdom and during night the 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 twilight elves comes out so you have normally in almost all fiction, the dark and the the high elves or the wood elves are great enemies, but in here they are yeah. part of the culture. So I did some twist twists that would be, uh, I'd hope, interesting for the players. They were. Uh, oh. I remember it, especially the uh, the undead were really interesting because uh, the way you made them was that uh, they're not this kind of uh, you know random outcast and his army of undead. The uh, the undead are the people who are running the uh, the society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are the the uh, the ones that and and the they are also one like all the living people dream one day that they could become undead. It's the, <laughs> the, uh, the, within their empire, um, and they sort of they, they, because they are immortal. They've kept this the this sort of a uh, ancient Greek slash Roman uh, style because obviously the the original founders of the empire are still there. So. The, the, <laughs> So they they haven't had any any they, they still like what they like they don't want to wear more modern stuff, um, so the the uh, hopefully uh, that kind of stuff will appeal to the players. As I mentioned in the post, is the right now it's the the I am putting tactic on hiatus even though the game is finished. I don't want to start pushing it out at the same time as I'm trying to get the, the Trench Crusade done and the, the published. And of course, with Trench Crusade, I have other people working with me, so I can't. Obviously, I don't want them to look me publishing posts about a different game. Let's get Trench Crusade done really well. Have all the models, all the art done. Mike Francina is is a well, very well known artist, and for a good reason. He is a truly excellent. It's the a true devotee of John Blanche as well. It's the the very much he wouldn't probably be. No, he wouldn't be an artist without John. Definitely not. A <laughs> it's the the so there is this influence. So can you tell us a bit about uh, Trench Crusade and uh, what's about? I'm getting this kind of World War One uh, meets yeah. uh, Dark Ages and monsters kind of kind yeah. of aesthetic. Yeah. So, in a nutshell, the 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 it's World War War One meets demons. So during Crusades, the the uh, the Crusaders opened the wrong door, and the the committed a great heresy, which I won't detail what it is, and opened the uh, gate to hell, <laughs> and okay. outpoured it's the, the the forces of the 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 hell. And meanwhile, then the divine powers is the the activated and started helping the humanity. So the the world became this battlefield divided between the heretics, one third of the humanity followed them, and then the the those who follow God. Uh, it unified the church. So, for example, there was the, the lady in the previous picture would represent one of the churches in Africa who've come to fight in the Trench Crusade, the, the in a groups called Trench Pilgrim. So she would have seen visions, and you can see the combination of both European and African churches symbolism. So he, uh, she has the loudspeaker so she can shout ceremonies as she leads the, the oh, faithful. Okay. And she has the armor because she has the anti-tank hammer, which explodes on a hit. So she has the armor when when she hits a tank, so she will hopefully survive it. <laughs> so she will be one of the ladies from the 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 the, uh, uh, the the church forces that come from Africa. Because the, the gates of hell opened during uh, the Crusades, there was never any col uh, colonialism. So the ancient kings of, kings of Nubia have uh, the and the e Egypt have survived. It's the the and they send their own forces to. So, to so it's like a long term alternate history. It's not just uh, yeah. oh hey this happened last week. Yeah yeah no oh, no this right. is the, the world war has been raging. It's the the for hundreds of years and uh, and the the and of course there has been uh, ebbs and flows and there's been long periods without fighting and then renewed warfare. It's the the and there are like these multiple layers now of the 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 wreckage of the war all across the European front and the the uh, and in the Antioch, because the the new Antioch is is close to where our Antioch is, where they are trying to hold okay. the the incursions at bay. But the 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 hell's forces make landfalls elsewhere all around the world. So the 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 war is fought in multiple wounds. It's a real world war. 
So this is a heretic priest. Yeah, uh, it's the... Dungeometry Machines does have a very strong uh, mount of Sauron vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the uh, a one of the humans who's the, the dedicated themselves to the, the one of the, the archdukes or princes of hell in exchange for uh, uh, for the support of the patron. In the Trench Crusade, you don't cast spells directly, but you ask favors from your patron. Ooh. And of course, depending on your patron, if you roll catastrophic failures, the, 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 it can be very bad for you. But of course, the more power you ask for, the greater the risk, but the greater the power. Uh, but yeah, it's the Trench Crusade is the, the it's a uh, like a scale of Mordheim plus maybe five-ish model, so a tiny bit larger. Uh, campaign system with a uh, with a deep customization is the, the way your uh, uh, the the warband games experience uh, World War War One technology with the sort of the medieval esoteric supernatural aspect to it. So uh, uh, let me get this straight: is the guy with the bell and the flail one of the good guys? He's one of the good guys. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> He has nailed a cross into his eyes to gain the the, the sight from God, and the the uh, he acts as a bodyguard for one of the uh, the, the the prophets of the the, the trench pilgrims. Uh, it's the most like he's done a the the there is a thing called the Meta Christs. So the church is desperately trying to obviously bring the the Redeemer back, and they have the DNA of the original Redeemer, the the Christ, right. and they are using that to create Meta Christs. But these are not perfect, because obviously man is not perfect, so they are not the true redeemer. But they do the, the communion, instead of with wine and bread, they do it with the real flesh and blood of the Christ. And this can change people. So in this case, these are the, the people who, uh, who, who uh, consume the, 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 the communion, is they can, in this case, grow massive in size and nail the crosses on their eyes and in their body it's the 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 pain the favor of the the angels and the lord and the saints and the they act as the bodyguards of the uh the the trench uh, prophets this really sounds really 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 hard work <laughs> oh yeah yeah here is the the arch heretic this is the the one of the original templars who opened the gate of hell and this is uh, what they, the big one or the years, small one yeah, hundreds of years of exposure to hell. This is what you what you become, and there you can see all the heretic priests marching to war. It's the, the oh, along. Wow. All right. Now this, I re I really love this picture because yeah. uh, it it's got such a heavy atmosphere. I mean, the yeah. uh, it it really feels oppressive. Yeah, yeah. It's the the, the it's a uh, a a a field uh, shrine. Uh, it's the the where you make the 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 uh the prayers it's the the for the success in metal because the war has been going so long time ago the 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 modern versions of the 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 new orthodox bible which is the sort of the unified holy book of the the, the good guys okay. mainly contains battle psalms because the world's been and war so much it's the the so mainly people are praying for success in this war so he would go here and kneel and say that the the uh, the rifle and the trench club are ready for the day of battle, but we remember the name of uh, of the Lord. It's the we have come up with this sort of a what a King James Bible would sound like if there would be this endless war with a very real uh, supernatural evil. Is the, the that the literal forces of hell? It's hell on earth. It's the, the fighting fighting against you. And there are the, the the fallen comrades, the the catacombs, because it's too dangerous to move the bodies. So the catacombs of the fallen heroes are in the trenches. So you have the skulls there, and then mixed with all this World War One iconography, like the sandbags, the trenches, and the 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 the, the going over the top. It's the World War One isn't that well uh, supported. It's the most of the stuff in gaming comes from World War Two. Uh, so we really like the aesthetic there. And it also means that the World War One still had like it had metal armor and it had like cavalry charges and yeah. sabers, uh, but it also had like machine guns and the mustard gas and the hand grenades. So it's a really interesting mix of the the equipment and weaponry uh, tied in with this the the supernatural aspect of the 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 of the heaven and uh, hell. Um, 
so let's say for me as a game designer, that's a super interesting space to, to work on. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> so Erdman Brick is saying, I'm never going to church again, too hardcore. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Questboard Terrain is asking, uh, this is wonderful lore. Are any other religious symbols effective or is there only one church in the world? Uh, no, no, there is like there is a Sultanate of Rum, which we are hoping will be in the core rules, uh, because the the we are sort of taking a stance that the the uh, if you if you follow the path of good, it's the 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 god is multifaceted, and uh, and if the French Crusade would be successful, we'd love to study what the neo samurai look like and the the. Uh, what the, the, the new world would look like. Because remember, there's been no colonialism, so the empires oh, of the oh, Aztec oh. <laughs> Incas would still be there. And the the, uh, the the what would China look like is the... the uh, what would be the Great Wall now against the, the, the devil hordes look like because they're fighting, of course, there. So, uh, yes, the other symbols, I think it's the, the if you have true faith, it's the, the this would be effective. It's the... the we are not going to go too deep in the rules on the theology. But, for example, if you pray to St. George, it's the he will answer. He can be your patron if you're one of the good guys. It's the um, So we are taking this more of a unified uh, the, 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 uh, look into it. We are focusing first on the European front simply because it's our culture. So we know this better. And we want to use people within different cultures if we're going to cover them. We want to make sure that they, we do it right. It's the, the so we are starting with the stuff that we know. It's the, the uh, but yeah. Uh, to answer the questions, absolutely. A, a I would absolutely see a crazy Taoist monk. It's the doing all <laughs> well, these backflips in the air with a uh, with a bolt action rifle. It's the and the the a Chinese saber, it's the and using the the uh, the holy scrolls against the invading demons. I think that would be super cool. It sounds amazing. I mean, uh, quite apart from writing the uh, game rules, just uh, coming up with the uh, backstory for games must be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then they inform each other. It's the mm. the. Uh, it's much easier for rather than say that write a rules for a uh, a melee weapon. Well, if it's a trench club, like they had in World War One. Okay, what is what used for? What is it good in? It's the, the how can I interpret its role with the rules? Much more fun for me. Yeah, here you see trench pilgrims with their iron copyrights that the the uh, when they put those on, it's the they are blessed so that the, the they can withstand the presence of demons and devils, is they and not go mad. So they act as a both as a helmet but also as a protection against the All right. the, the horror. I see this one, for example, th this picture seems to be very he heavily John Blush inspired. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, the this was not done by Mike Francino. This was another artist whose name escapes me. But uh, I think it's the if you are into modern gaming, then uh, John Blanche is gonna be one of the artists. If you are a the new wave of the artist, it would be pretty <laughs> strange if there was no influence, especially if you are into stuff like the the sort oh, of definitely. gothic horror. It's the, the he is he is the rock upon which Game Workshop is built. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, uh, even going with uh, he defined the entire aesthetic of Warhammer Forty Thousand. There, there is no and, other and, way to describe it. No, no, no. Same for Warhammer, the game of fantasy battles. It's the it's his, he was the 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 who painted the first cover of the first edition of Warhammer. Well, it was John. Okay, uh, okay, Dungeon Matron, no, I don't think there's a heavily armored flying spaghetti monster, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, that's an interesting guy. I don't think the guys, I mean, I love the spaghetti monster, but I don't think that the followers have true faith. I don't think that they genuinely believe in it, It's the, if you see what I mean. <laughs> uh, and I, I, I don't think that the, the aesthetic would quite fit the Trench Crusade. But I love, I love playing spaghetti monsters. Super funny. Yeah, and everyone loves spaghetti. So there's that as well. <laughs> well yeah. Hey, uh, jumping back to more time for a second. You recently announced uh, two Warbands. Yeah, yeah. So would you like to tell us a bit about those? 
Yeah, so the Grimforge, they are the Italian major company who's been doing a lot to support Mordheim. Uh, and they asked that, hey, could you design a couple? We have a couple of ideas. Could you do the design for us? And I thought that the, they've done so much for the community. Uh, sure, why not? It's the the uh, the ideas where the, the sort of high level kind of models they want to do were quite interesting. So the the uh, I wrote the written rules for them. It's the the as always. Remember, I no longer work for GW, so my stuff is just as in unofficial as everything else. But hey, it's still nice for the Mordheim players to to get a two new warbands that they can the the collect and maybe use as conversions and the the or and two new uh, warband rules that they can play. So I mean, it's been super fun. It's the, I just finished the the first pass on the second one. The 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 uh, the the uh, the reverse, the the Lustrian reverse, that's already done. So it's a sort of a uh, like a Necromunda Spirus. These are the survivors of the expeditions to Lustria. So just a couple of the toughest of the tough, the ones that okay. could survive in the jungles. So uh, they are. You, uh, it's a, uh, the 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 core of the warband is a five-ish, very unique heroes that have that are quite powerful. But uh, they can't be replaced. So you have these much weaker prospect henchmen. They cannot become heroes for last good talent. But when one of your heroes dies, you can't buy a new hero. Instead, you get all the equipment that the, the that hero have, and you pick one of these henchmen prospects, and they become the new hero and can then use the equipment. It's the uh, quite frankly, it's probably going to be quite tough warband to run because numbers are so useful in Mordheim. But it's a different approach. And the other one is this uh, slanishy uh, House of Corruption, uh, uh, which, like yeah, yeah, it's the, uh, for example, it also has unique heroes, like the one that the, the it can attack its own members with barbed whip. So you do, on, uh, you automatically hit, and then you see you uh, if you wound and if you take out your own. But then that's agony. So it's agony and ecstasy. So the, the you hit the one of the, the usually you have this thrall, it's the wretched slaves that they have slaves to darkness who are very weak so you hit them you maybe take it out but then you gain uh double toughness for a while agony okay. and ecstasy right. because planesh gives you ecstasy in as a reward for the agony you caused and we have the flesh merchant that can the, the tra strap the 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 one of the slaves as a meat shield so when you get attacked instead of the 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 hero dying you remove the slave so the 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 <laughs> Oh, the, 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 all sorts of nasty slanishy stuff. Uh, yeah, that sounds perfectly uh, fitting for the uh, for the kind of uh, the background of the of that world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the um, and I I always wanted to do more slanishy stuff, and uh, the the and I also want to sort of um, uh, explore the different aspects because the lots of people go directly into the erotic with and the sexual with the slanish and that is part of the prince of chaos but the temptation and the the sort of the the vices run the gamut it's not just about the pleasures of flesh it's also about the the corruption of the mind and body and the, my favorite aspect of that warband is that whenever it's the that slanish warband is the kills one opponent, whether it's a hero or a one of the henchmen of the opponents, doesn't matter. They can take one of their beastmen or one of their chaos hounds, and by the for the cost of one weird, uh, weird stone, they can take take a part of that the, the person as they are dying and graft it into the the beastman or the hound. So you, if you take the head, for example you by paying that one weird stone you can take the leadership value of that fallen creature and give it to the say the chaos hunt oh. and of course then we want that the players will convert it so they will remove the dog head and put the human head so the the so the the slanish is is about corruption and then you can sort of eventually this is, of course is quite expensive because you then you don't get to sell the weird stone of course. But, yeah. but then you can build these beastmen and the the chaos hounds into these monstrosities that they take the the uh, uh characteristics of a fallen enemies and of course a clever modeler if i kill the enemy hero and i take and they they have leadership of nine and i take their head and i put it onto my beastmen it's the the so i get the leadership nine is the you can do this kind of cool and creepy stuff yeah i think the the uh that 
time I remember that there were these kind of uh, modeling suggestions was uh, back in uh, uh, Slaves to Darkness, the, uh, yep. the old one from, uh, was it for Fantasy Roleplay or for Warhammer Fantasy Battles? It's, it's been Both, because the original uh, Realms of Chaos <clears throat> were for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, Warhammer Fantasy Battle, and the 40k, they, the rules, there were rules for all of the systems in them. Uh, but the Grim Forge is making the the models modular, so, the, oh, the, nice. so you can do this. It's the, the with the bits that you get. Nice. Yeah. So Earthman Brick is saying very cool mechanic reminds me of Hellraiser. Yeah. Uh, give me a second. I'll just move the the this room is needed. So the the give me a couple of seconds. Okay, no um, rush. Okay, one sec. Let's put on a quick break. Be right back. So yeah, it's the uh, and obviously the woman has to be play tested. I urge everybody who is interested in this. It's the contact Grimforge. Uh, what was the name of the the head honcho Dario? Uh, the, the, I am not super good with the the Italian. I've been talking to him all the time. I'm super embarrassed. I can't remember everything offhand. Uh, the the uh, Dario Bianche, Biancheri. Is the contact him? It's the and get in on action. I would really appreciate. It's the the all the possible feedback and play testing. Of course, I obviously I test stuff myself, but you guys will come up with combinations and things that I haven't thought that could um, uh, make the game unpleasant or un uh, or so unbalanced. It's no longer fun to play against that warband or play with that warband. Okay, so uh, we have another. I'm going to drop the link to the uh, Mordheim group here, and I, I'm guessing people can uh, find him there, yeah? Yep. Okay. So, one sec. Where do we go? Back here. Okay, and we have a great question from uh, Sean Schultz here. Uh, any initial thoughts on what a theoretical uh, Zench warband might look like? How do you pronounce that anyway? Zinch, Zinch, Zinch. Zinch. That's what Zinch. Rick told okay. me. Zinch. It's the and hey, Rick came up with Zinch. Yep. So <laughs> ultimate say, authority. Good enough for me. <laughs> it's the uh, so um, well. The, the obvious thing is magic, but uh, I would probably try to make something that there is like a, quite a lot of spell casting because most of the, the magic in Mordheim on purpose is super low key. Uh, so I would probably work on how to bring that the the into it more and maybe have like a selection of different the the uh, disciplines of magic, like really go into the esoteric. There isn't really a magical war band in Mordheim right now. It's the, the it's not it's the of course some spell lists are better, but there are very few uh, or no war band whose main strength is magic. So that's what I would do with Zinch. Is the simple cause well, he's the prince of magic. It's the and it's a again. It would give you something completely new way to approach the game where you build your warband around a efficient expenditure of magic. That's how I would approach it. It's the uh, that's the first thought. Maybe I would come up with something else, but it would be pretty weird if the change warband wouldn't be one of the best, if not the best, magical warband. Part of the reason I did Cult of Possessed was part of, well, of course, the, it's the Shadow Lord is part of the Mordheim's lore, but the I also wanted a something that no matter what kind of a chaos angle you want, you would have a base. You could always do the Cult of Possessed. It's the but that doesn't mean like the the of course there would be followers of the individual gods, but yeah, um, I would do magical warband. That makes sort of sense. So maybe something possibly physically weaker than the possessed, but with lots of uh, magical options. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different spell list. Maybe a, a ability that if you have a like you would if you form a uh, circle of the I think the holy number of the zines is six. It's the I have to double check. It was the each of the chaos gods. Uh, eight is corn. It's the so if you have six models and you make a circle, then they can cast spells from a special list. Is to do something cool like that. That, that would be an interesting mechanic. To, yeah, exactly. Do something really interesting and different. Is the um, because I've done so many warbands, obviously, for Mordheim, that the, uh, if I do something, I've like I've talked with the Reavers and the Slanish, I want to do something that would be fresh and exciting and yeah. not like anything else. It's not just a question of changing numbers and uh, yeah. putting a different miniature. Yeah. Uh, actually, that reminds me. Uh, I think of the, uh, in the in the beginning warbands, except for the uh Caven and Undead, everyone is uh, human, but no, uh, not including uh, Bretonians, for example, I understand, because they're all the way over there and uh, they have nothing to do with it. Yeah. Uh, but stuff like uh, Orcs, for example. Yeah. Well, uh, Orcs, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I, I thought it was like, uh, hey, there's this city where every, all the humans are fighting all the time. Let's just go there and have a party. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you look at the, because the Orcs, are especially at that point in the fifth edition, they were very humorous. And they've always retained the angle. Like they are a, of course, they are a parody of the English football hooligans. <laughs> like they are, that's 100%. And this is, there is no, trust me, like this was the, 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 the Rick absolutely went after. It's the mocking, the, 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 the violent winks. It's the, they are not, a lot of people say that they are mocking the, the working class. They are not. It's the, the it's the football hooligans. And football hooligans come from all the walks of life. There are plenty of rich people who go and be violent in the football matches. Um, the, the, but they were very comical. And I think if we brought that level of tongue-in-cheek into Mordheim, it wouldn't have worked. I'm happy that the town crier did Orc Warband, because Orcs are popular, and I'm not saying that they shouldn't play, but I think the core book is better without it. The Bretonians, apart from the fact that because the horses can't enter uh, buildings, even ruined ones, the Bretonians are the worst possible force for uh, uh, Mordheim. Like, like they are rubbish, and they should be rubbish. It's because who brings cavalry force into an urban ruined skirmish? Uh, that would be a terrible but, idea. <laughs> anyway, I mean, in real life too, the, the horse would just it's break its legs. You would dismount and fight on foot. Uh, but also because the Bretonians at that point in Warhammer, the, the knights represented the purity and goodness and the lady of the lake, it would have the the iconography and the image didn't suit the, the darkness and the, the, the sort of the, the corruption of Mordheim. It was much better with this Germanic Gothic angle. Uh, and again, I have no problem with people playing with Bretonian warbands because it's quite funny because they always lose. But <laughs> I still think uh, it, the, the core rule book was not the right place for those rules. Yeah, uh, I'll be honest. I think one of the uh, things I liked about the whole uh, setting is that, okay, not counting the uh, Sisters of Sigmar, but uh, pretty much everyone in the game is a terrible person. Yeah, yeah, they are. The sisters had to be there because they uh, remember dark is only dark if there is a light that you can compare to. If the whole world was dark, then we wouldn't call it or think of it as dark because there would be nothing else. But then you would just have the what is the shade of dark? Mm -hmm. It's the, the sisters are important because they ground on there is very few of them and they they are clearly the the outmatch there's the the, the compared to the the because everybody else is just greedy murderous bastards. They are the only ones who try to do something good. Um, the, the, but because they exist, the other womans appear evil, if you see what I mean. Because if, if nobody's good, everybody's just evil, then the evil is the okay, standard. Is... It's normal. So it's important sisters are there. It's the, they represent that there has to be a tiny bit of light and hope for horror and, and grimness to work. Yeah, and I'm guessing, uh, because if you take the sisters out of the equation, we, what you get are uh, the mercenaries, the witch yeah. hunters, and uh, the undead and the scaven. So, uh, by comparison, even the uh, mercenaries start looking like, uh, you know, yeah, they're, yeah, they're not that bad. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it was important, like, the, the, the mercenaries are there for themselves. And Just for, for the money, the, yeah. 
and the people who they represent the cities whose leader just wants to be a ruthless tyrant of the empire uh the the but also i think the witch hunters and the sisters are really can tell an interesting story because they are both followers of sigmar and have real faith it's the uh, uh but the witch hunters obviously have taken to the absolute extreme and it also took the interesting juxtaposition between the the fact that the the uh at that point, a lot of the the, the, the church, which was wrong in the law, of course, the obvious the the, the prayer the, when the uh, sisters pray, their prayers are granted by Sigmar, but a lot of the priests said that the the women can't become priests, so they were considering them heretics. So there was this very interesting, like a schism within church. Because if you read the medieval history or Renaissance history, the only thing church did was fight within itself. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the the. I, and I think that makes the, the the conflict between them very believable. It, it, it again it does uh, make the uh, backstory a lot richer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking of backstory, uh, what about uh, uh, Einur? What, what did you ever plan to? Uh, because okay, there is this thing. There's just this one elf who uh, no one knows where he came from. He's just. Yep. <clears throat> was there were there plans to expand that backstory, or was it planned to just leave it uh, mysterious and then you know fill out your own no, books and stuff? Well, uh, I know uh, I used to be a game master for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay Group for years here in Finland. I know was a character of one of my players, so right. it's a homage to my own game, and I wanted to keep the elves super rare and super mysterious, like they were presented in the lore of the, the Warhammer world at that point. Also, elves are way too powerful. Their stat line, uh, initiative is so good in Warhammer. Oh yeah, movement. I mean, and with just their movement, oh. they can already dominate the table. Yeah, they have absolutely the rights. They have the high movement, super high initiative, and high or super high ballistic skill. It makes them lethal in Mordheim. I didn't did the, with the war bands like they. I never. That's the one war band I wish people wouldn't do because they are Mordheim system breaks down there. It's they are too powerful. Uh, I was never a fan of the publishing the Shadow Warriors, so I understand why it was done. People like elves, it's the, but that's why the the rule book only has the scout and the Ainur, and that's it for the for the 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 dwarves work a lot better. Again, I didn't include them in the core book because again at that point in Warhammer the Dwarves who are a parody of the Yorkshire. Uh, everybody thinks they are Scottish. They are not. They nope. speak all the all the no no that's the 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 the, the barbarians of the Albion are Scots. Oh, okay. The the dwarves in Warhammer are hundred percent based on the men of Yorkshire. That's why they use the words like Wasuk and Yonks. It's the because they sound right. yeah yeah yeah. Ask any Yorkshire. It's the the. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the the Warhammer is so quintessentially English game you wouldn't believe, um, but the dwarves at that point also had a, a a fair bit of like a comedy and tongue in cheek in them. So I only included the grimmest and darkest type of dwarf that dwarf the dwarves. Players, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's... I mean, apart from balancing the game, it looks like uh, you know all the. There are all these design choices which go into supporting the uh, backstory. It's like uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really uh, detailed, it's, complicated it's, work. Yeah, yeah. Also, if you look about the, like the, the the reason why so many of the old fans of Star Wars hated Jar Jar Binks is not because of Jar Jar Binks. Because the, the, everybody likes comedy, but it didn't suit like the in the original trilogy. Yes, there were funny things, but even Yoda, who appeared comical, in the end, it actually was the most powerful and the wisest. So even the comical angle had death, while Jar Jar Binks literally was just a, a really stupid mook who is, uh, steps on pool, literally, literally steps on pool. <laughs> so in the same way that if the I would have put the Mordheim full of like the, all the silliest aspects of Warhammer. Now there was plenty of very silly stuff. Then I think the I don't think is they would have survived because the, the people would just remember the 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 silliness and the jokes and how it took them out of the world. It's the mm. the uh, okay. if you, you I don't think you can be hyper comical and tongue in cheek uh and grim dark at the same time. Mordheim rule book has plenty of jokes, but they tend to be more of that gallows humor type. Yeah. 
Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Romigan 12. Yorkshire Dwarves is much more nuanced, especially with options for the war with the Lancastrians. Uh, I didn't quite make that out. Can you read that again? Please? Okay, so Romigan 12. Uh, Yorkshire Dwarves is much more nuanced, especially with options for war with the uh, Lancastrians. Yep, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Remember again, this was the, the game was written by actually quite erudite Englishmen like Nigel Stillman, Rick is the, they are all uh, archaeology majors and the, the, uh, a lot of like the Perry twins, the, the Jervis, Andy have a deep nuanced understanding of history and especially, of course, their own country's history. So, um, I, in some ways, yes, it's funny, but it's also, it is a homage and a tipping the hat to the, because the Yorkshire men are known to be dour, but brave and sort of unyielding. Like it's no surprise that in a lot of the, the English uh, war stories, the, the Yorkshire man is the unmovable, immovable rock. <laughs> I'm not giving up. It's the, I will for the king, the, the, the king and the country. Okay. Uh, I do have two more questions for you. Oh, uh, they're, they're one question, they're one question, but uh, slightly different. So, uh, do you have a favorite war game that you didn't write yourself? Yeah, Saga. Saga, Saga is great. All right. Saga is great. It's the interesting systems. There is some inspiration from it. You will notice in Trench Crusade. I'm obviously I never copy anybody, but there is something very clever about it. There are some things, obviously, like every game that I think don't I wouldn't do myself, and that's good. Because it would be really boring if we all made identical games. Yeah, <laughs> um, but I'm very impressed by 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 Saga. It's the the uh, it brought something new to the war gaming, I think, which is not easy. Because at the end of the day, it has to be a game about the uh, armies fighting, mm -hmm. and it does mean that the, you kind of have to have rules for hand to hand combat shooting movement. Because otherwise, you don't have a game. So bringing something new is not that easy. Oh yeah. And the second question was. Uh... Is there a game? It might not be your favorite to play or uh, whatever, but you said, okay, this is really, a really, really well-designed game. Uh, are we talking about war games? Uh, yeah. uh, let's yeah. say in general, yeah. Let's say any game. Oh, well, okay, obviously. I'm not going to go into digital games because that's a... Well, I, actually, I will. It's the Microsoft Train Simulator. Really? I, right. Yeah. Amazing, like, the how it's perfectly mirrors the the real world trains and the the how you build it so that the 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 trains stop not too early not too late and all the interiors are right and all the models it's the and I can't play it it's the, it's too boring to me but that does not mean that I do not admire the dedication and the hard work and the quality of the design it's the the uh, to get something so perfectly to 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 Set yourself a goal, which is to simulate real-world trains in a game, and so perfectly capture that. That's an achievement. But it's not for me. And hey, uh, uh, I have uh, people who love trains. They love trains. It's the old, more uh, power to them. If it was made, someone must have, you know, there must have been a market for it. Yeah. There but is. Uh, yeah, again, it's like... Uh... So uh, let's say that balance is not the uh, most important factor. Realism is not the uh, most important factor. Yeah. Uh, I can speak for, for example, some sword fighting games where, okay, we have very realistic sword fighting, but yeah. is it really playable? Yeah. Or fun. Hmm? Or fun. Or fun. Yeah. So uh, I'm guessing the answer is no, but is there like a kind of a how to make things fun guide? It's like a, you know, Apart from uh, testing, I mean. Um, I think the only thing I've ever found, and this is quite high level, is that if you find yourself doing the same things every time, that there's only one thing that works, then it's not going to be fun. Because humans are masters of finding patterns. Mm -hmm. So a game that the engages your thinking on lateral levels or and the, the, the uh, across the board horizontally that you have many different ways to approach it to try to win those are the good games it's the, the because you return to them because then you think if i did this differently i want to try this 
But if the answer always is that the, the I have to take this card and this gun and they move this way, and that's the best strategy and nothing else works, then that's not going to be fun. So that's the one thing I always try to do, whether it's a war or army list or war band or a game mechanic or a new supplement, that can this be approach what I offer here in ma from many different angles? Can I build different forces, different combinations? Uh, like the reason why Magic the Gathering lives is that the, the, you can always come up with a new kind of a, a deck. Because if it was, if there was only one <clears throat> that works and only one way to play that was always wins, then it wouldn't be such a huge, huge, huge game. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's the same thing for Warhammer or Forty K. It's the all the major games of the kind of I love. It's the, the remember there are other types of games, but to me the the I only have fun with the game if I feel that I can come back to it and change something. Not only perhaps to improve my performance, but to experience the game in a different way. And this is not easy. It's super easy to make a game that the I do one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the optimal. But then it of course means that that is what everybody always does. Yeah, which you add, and at the end of the day, if, uh, if it's literally those five steps, it all boils down to the dice, and then it's not yeah. not fun anymore. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Then it's more like the the uh, snakes and ladders. It's the uh, the the where the game is actually decided before you started. It's only thing that affects it is the, the 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 in which order the cards are shuffled before you start. You have no control over what happens. I mean, of course, that entertains little kids and it's it's beautiful to look at the board. But um, could you see yourself playing as a main hobby snakes and ladders forever eh, knowing yeah. that there is you have no way of influence the game whatsoever at least you would write your own house rules that you yeah, have something yes. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah try to beat up the snake <laughs> okay hey, yeah that's uh that's quite a fair bit to think about yeah okay so uh uh, would you like to have a look at uh, what people have put in the Discord? Yes, absolutely. Got some terrain going on here? Yep. Right, so one second. Here we go. Okay, the first one is by uh, Sophie. Ooh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's the, that the patience to do the, the, the individual stones like this. It's the, the, that's before you try it yourself, you, do, you don't appreciate it. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I also um, love all the weathering and the uh, foliage yeah. in there. Yep, yeah, yeah. It's the the for Morheim specifically, you could grime and dirty it up a little bit more if you wanted for that. But the the just a tremendous piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And good. See, you see, very important thing, especially for Morheim, there has to be enough room for the models. It's the 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 the, the you can see that you can fight battles in that. <laughs> Yeah, a lot the... of the rain falls down to the, 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 the with the problem that you can't put models anywhere. That's a really easy mistake to make because, you know, once you start gluing and stuff, oh, I can put some more uh, bricks here, I can put some more planks in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that, that really is a beautiful piece. It is. And uh, she left us also a little uh, guide here. Ooh. Oh, this is, is great when you can do that too, too. Because uh often the problem especially for beginners is that they see all this but they have no clue how to achieve it themselves yeah <laughs> so roots coffee tea yeah <laughs> she and herbs yeah it's the, the I, I can see that That's, uh, very clever well done sophie okay next one up is some uh the, are these terrain tiles from uh, earthman brick yeah that's an interesting one it's the the cause the the nice thing about warhammer is that since it's not grid based it's the mm -hmm. you can use squares or these the, the for the floor and make quite interesting patterns and this is quite interesting because with this kind of approach you can make a very varied ground it's the, definitely this yeah. this one's for a smaller scale because you've got these city blocks over here and yeah. this bunker here it's, i think it's more on the scale of a uh, mighty empires campaign if yeah. you remember that yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I played it quite a bit, but the re but the here is you could approach uh, a a board for thirty two millimeters same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just no make, make them larger. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make them larger and they they change the level of detail. It's the uh uh it's the the especially suits the desserts be a desert because there is the the the, the cracked earth. Mm -hmm. It's it looks it looks good in that pattern. Yeah, great work. Let's okay, see. and this is for uh, DM Scotty's uh, Is This Six Wasted World. It's a post-apocalyptic RPG that should be out uh, soon, hopefully. Sweet. Okay, so Steve's paintbrush. We've got this jet bike. Uh, oh, Slow. that's a very, like a little bit impressionistic style. It's the I like the the non-even freehand. The, I think one of the problems with the superb, well, not a problem. That you see a lot of painters that have such an amazing skills that all those black squares would be perfect. Like, and this is not a slight. And uh, but the, in real life, you see much more of the, the the I like this sort of painterly, painterly style. It's the the yeah yeah. It's and very... I th I think he did put some perfect squares here. Just I think just to show that he could. Yeah. No, I I think that's a gorgeous piece. It's the the I could see that in the. It would be interesting to write rules for something like that for Necromancer. <laughs> does have a lot of that, uh, you know, early uh, 40k vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got that that the, the grunge look, which I I really enjoy. Yeah. Are there? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, he's obviously a highly skilled painter. It's oh, the yeah. I've been painting busts lately too. It's the it's nice to to be able to to actually be able to paint eyes. It's yeah, because the, they're larger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful colors. It's the great skin tones. I mean, obviously, much better painter than I am. It's the I. I love looking at great paint uh, paint jobs. Okay, he's saying here that uh, he painted this uh, last year, but uh, he went back and uh, redid the uh, apples in the basket. Yeah, that's another nice thing about the, the your hobby painting hobby, because the, the you can go back to your old models mm -hmm. and just continue. There is no reason why you can't. It's the uh, that's not true for many hobbies. You can't replay a game of football. You can't go back to the football <laughs> game you lost and then win it later. But you can fix a model. Okay, uh, this is from Sophie and her partner, uh, more time yep. inspired. There we go. Yeah, oh yes. I love the wanted posters. Those are always like, they, they, they really ground you. And the, the and you really want to find out who is it that is wanted. <laughs> it's the also Mordheim, I say, has a, uh, the, the, I believe that's a lady. Uh, I the, think so. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. It's the because Mordheim obviously was at the that time. It was quite rare to see the Landschnecht and uh, period pieces with any women in them. Mordheim was a uh, quite unusual that it always had a strong presence of female models as well. So it's nice to see them there. It's the the um, it's great looking piece. Uh, uh, the the uh, I love the sewer. It's Bonus the, points for the uh, tentacle. Yeah, stay. <laughs> This beautiful work. Yep, great work. So let's see, uh, scatter terrain, the winter fungal queen and her court. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. This is the the uh, reminds me of the demon queen of fungi in D and D. It's the uh, I, I mean, looking at this model on Etsy, it's the the yeah. Uh, or was this from the no uh, from the the bones ripper bones? Is the I'm not sure. It's the uh, but yeah, it's the. A beautiful bit the I think that the magenta uh, is the is a beautiful color works really well with pale pale colors it's the the uh, sort of very striking and pops out and it's the much easier to see the details yeah. well, a lot of models are quite dark and and I really like dark but for this it's the it's, it's a really the, interesting uh, color yeah, really here. yeah yeah it's the the sort of the contrast between the the earthy colors and this uh, supernatural, unearthly magenta <laughs> pink, pink. It's really good. Great work. Oh, yes, I have that model myself, or the both of them. It's the, uh, my players have also encountered the Mykonids. I really like them the, because they are in the ND. They're actually reasonably powerful, but they are avowed pacifists who sort of, the, the, they are in the great communion with each other. It's the, they follow the way of the peace, unless, of course, they have to defend themselves. And they sort of they use these pacifying spores to to turn the people who attack them into pacifists. But then, if somebody attacks them, is that they infect them with the spores and they become these spore zombies that they they, they turn against the aggression. They it, they turn aggression against themselves. Yeah, beautiful work. Again, nice to see. I can see that there is a, a color scheme carries over, so you could make a, a fun with spores. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And little mushrooms. <laughs> little mushrooms, yeah. Mushrooms are always good.
Ooh, okay, this one's from Quest Board Ring. Yeah. Yeah, this is a bit of a, like a Jabberwocky kind of a, a, a feel to it. It's the, the sort of a, uh, uh, maybe a, a bit of the Monty Python monster design there, which, which of course, I love Pythons. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's funny. Uh, I, I, if I remember it correctly, that's uh, an eye from a uh, baby doll. From? From a uh, baby doll. Yeah, okay. okay. Appar See? Apparently, apparently you can buy, the, buy uh, bags of them. Just the eyes. Excellent. It's the, the, uh, good to know. It's the, uh, I could probably find some use for those. Yeah, it's the very fun. It's the and it's it's good to also see there is a different levels of painting. Like some people are incredibly ex advanced, others are more earlier in the they all have a different styles. But the the it's still really interesting to see it's the people's creativity. Oh yeah, ghosts, lots of ghosts. Yeah, there was a beautiful ghost with broken mirrors that the the Italians did for the Mordheim event. It's the a ghost with broken mirrors. Yeah, yeah, it's the. I can see if I can find the, uh, the the link to you. It's the. Just one second. Um, do 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 do. Um, I see if there is any. As painted. Actually, I know where I can find it. If you have the patience, I will quickly. Oh, no, <clears throat> okay. Is it here? On it. Uh, I think so. There it is. It's the. Uh, okay, now how could I give this to you? Okay, you can send it to me uh, through the Zoom chat. Okay, let's see. Can I... No, it doesn't want to, because I have the, the photo here. Uh, no, that's the wrong one. Oh, or maybe send it on the uh, Facebook chat instead, then, if it's a photo. Uh, let me see. There it is. I can, I can, no, I think I can get it here. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. There you okay, go. Okay, it's coming up. Just a second. Yeah. Please stand by. Yeah. Oh, it's that slow. Yeah, I'm I, I'm treating this poor laptop very badly. I'm running all sorts of things on it to uh, <laughs> to do the stream. So well, we can look at the 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 while it's loading. We can look at the the other ghosts here. So yeah, okay. So I presume that's the same ghost printed in different scales. I I think they're uh, made from toilet paper. Oh okay okay that's interesting. So uh, toilet paper ghosts, and then the uh, they've got uh, other stuff on them like uh, these plastic heads, for example. Yeah, I say. I oh. raise my head to the creativity. <laughs> uh, quite, uh, quite impressive. It's the. I will drop the photo to you also in the uh, Facebook chat, so okay. maybe it loads faster. Uh, by the way, I hope that you made my apologies to the <clears throat> people on Discord. It's the. I wasn't my plan to. Oh, I did. I didn't tell them. I just told them they had technical issues. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> but yeah, it's the... Uh, well, if you can make that say yourself, then even better, you don't need any any models. It's the, the, so it you can make your own undead army. <laughs> <laughs> so did I find it? Stand by, please. Yeah, I send it on Facebook to you as well. So... Okay, here we go. Excuse me while I move some stuff around. Nearly there. Yeah. Okay, oh, this, this looks fantastic. Yeah. There we go. It, it, uh, 
it's the uh the sculptor who does only old style uh, old school sculpting is called Alessio Kisbani. So right. you can find him on the Mod High Metal if the, the if you'd want that for yourself. It's the the I bought one from him. It's the uh uh that the the, the, the reflection of mirror is hand painted, amazing stuff. What? So yeah. it's not it's not a, I no, it, it, no, no, it's not a mirror, it's oh. painted. Ooh, so that yeah. that's literally a, a flat piece of plastic. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. It's a oh, a flat piece of metal, I think, in this case, because he does the old school. Uh, uh, with old, the copper old... thing, yeah. 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 Oh, all right. Oh, that, so that's the... some next level stuff. Yeah. 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 So the. Huh. Yeah. But uh, uh, if you want this ghost, is the drop him a line and support independent creators. So what's his name again? Uh, Alessio Kisbani. Alessio Kisbani. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Very well known in in Mordheim circles. It's the. Okay, so I'm guessing we can find him on the uh, Mordheim group too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mordheim Italy uh, for sure. Yeah, let's return to this. Yeah, I'm super impressed. Like the the. Uh... I'm interested how the the one uh, transports them. Maybe that there is some the the spray can to so they don't fall apart. It's the quite I, I think if they're if they're varnished heavily enough, I don't think that would be a yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah, that but... becomes like uh, plastic. Yeah, and then there is a, I see a piece of a, a castle wall. Yeah, uh, this is uh, from the basement terrain. This is actually a piece of history here. That's the uh, that's a piece from the. Uh, Remember the Mighty Fortress box set from uh, 1987? The, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the one before. Cause, yeah, because yeah. I made one with the Perry Twins from plastic. This was before it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he got uh, the kit without the doors, and now he's making all the uh, parts he's missing. Yep. I mean, that's what the hobby is about, isn't it? Yep. Make it your own. For sure. <laughs> Sweet. Let's see. Not the best picks, uh, so let's see. Oh, I think there's a more timetable. Yeah, yeah, and there you can again see that the, those are like picture books. I think it's the the uh, even if you don't have all the time or money or uh, materials and resources, is that you can make stuff work. It's the I would happily play a a, a game on that table. It's the uh, the binders might make some some movement. Uh, the binder, uh, the the coils might make some movement mm -hmm. interesting, but it shows just how how much creativity there is. Oh, I, I think those are the uh, like the uh, books they make for uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I think it's just yeah. literary scenarios. So yeah, I never thought of yeah. using them like this. No, no, no. It's a very clever. But yeah, I mean the uh, the first games of more time and Warhammer I played were uh, over shoe boxes and books oh, and yeah. uh, beer cans. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, the imagination is so powerful. I see piece of cake. Piece of cake. Yeah. Okay, this is uh, Very good. Dungeon Matron. Teasing okay. us. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and Quest Board Train with some older stuff. Oh, okay. Yep. So this is the Night Hag. I think she Night painted, Hag, yep. Yeah, yeah. this about a year ago, I think, or two years ago. Yep, yep. That's the, the, the Nulls or Miniatures on such a small scale. <laughs> yeah, there's a Mind Flayer. Again, that's the, the from the Reaper, I think. It's yeah, the... and then there's this uh, larger Mind Flayer thingy she uh, built herself. Yeah. Then I'm, I, I painted an Elder Brain. Let me show that. Oops. Are the eyes glowing? Yeah, they do look like they're glowing, aren't they? I'm going to have to sculpt the brain at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I think uh, all of us should sculpt the brain at some point. I think many of us will find it useful. Yeah, so good old Ooh. Elder Brain for d d It's the in the end, my players didn't fight it. They thought uh, they had a choice between the fighting Elder Brain or a dragon, and they went for the dragon. It's a classic, but I had the Elder Brain ready, just in case. <laughs> I'm sure we'll find uh, another use for it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and the, the, the like, Mind Flayers are a classic D&D &D monster, so the, the uh, I run more than one group, so maybe 
Maybe a chance will come. Yeah, I think uh, mind flares tend to be one of the uh, creepiest things in the game. I think given the chance of uh, going up against anything, yeah, yeah, but a mind flare, I'd probably pick anything. <laughs> yeah, it can't be resurrected if your brain's gone. Okay, uh, more from Scatter Terrain. Uh, these are her uh, necrobotanist uh, undead. Necrobotanist, interesting. Oh yeah, I can see the the the. the... Yeah, I, I do like it when there is a theme, like for something so uh, classic and well-known, like the skeletons, if you can find a, a unique twist of your own for them. It's the... the uh, so I always look for when people ask me to judge uh, painting of armies mm -hmm. for competitions and tournaments. Is the, I always look for some unique twist, is the, some creativity. Yep. Yeah, yeah, there is a... Uh, Botanist, heavy botanist action, wine action going. <laughs> Sweet. Quite effective and probably, yeah, there is the, okay, so it's sort of a druid like the, the circle of spore kind of druid is the controlling them. Very clever. Now, pods, yeah, this is like the, from the little shop of horrors. <laughs> oh, the, the ending of that movie in the, the original Black and White is so creepy. I don't know what you Okay, then I won't spoil it. All right, I uh, definitely will look it up though. Um, but yeah, the uh, flying yeah, machine made from the, the other end six. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very. Yeah, there is some nasty, creepy in internal organ stuff going on there instead of the uh, around the Tesla coils. <laughs> yeah, interesting approach. Okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Earthman Brick still got my copy read through the book many times, and everything is still on the spruce. You you could probably get quite a bit of money for it. Oh, I, I, not you probably can. You definitely would like those nowadays. If you have an intact box, it's the yeah. the uh, it, it costs a lot of money. A lot of people are now printing their own rule books. It's the because it's so difficult to get hold of the original anymore. Two, three, four, six, seven. 10, 11, 12. That's, uh, Steve, do you have, uh, have you reached up to 13 miniature toilets? Sorry? No, uh, he's, yeah. he's got his line of uh, miniature toilets over here. Okay, yes, the, um, I better not ask what it's for. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I started and managed to get this finished during the stream. All right, well, let's mm. see. Yep. I can see there is a the the uh, possibly a beginning of a building. Yeah, I think it's a yeah backdrop kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it looks like. <coughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. I I also like to do stuff while I'm listening to things. It's the uh, feels nice to achieve things and also to to learn. Yeah, I I find it very useful uh, when <coughs> uh, I'm doing stuff like. Uh, Putting bricks on stuff. There we go. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It, it, bricks it, take a very long time to put on, so yeah. we are listening to something definitely helps. Yeah, yeah. The the the. I'm always look out for the. There are some really great uh, 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 wallpapers that have the brick mm -hmm. uh, uh, pattern. Yeah. Of the right scale, but the the when you see them, buy them because they are right. so useful. Because you know, you can obviously there are times when you want individual bricks to sticking out like from the internal, but for the outside, it's the the there is a wallpaper that's brilliant for that. I, th I think they're the ones that are also slightly textured, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, not yeah. just slightly, but quite quite strongly. Really? All right. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's the the this was the if you look at the original Modheim board, for example, all that brick pattern is wallpaper. Oh, okay. So the I mean the ones that we built at studio. Yeah, the the ones that were in the uh, white dwarf book. stuff. Yeah. Mm. yeah, in the book. Yeah, it's the it's the the out uh, outside is all wallpaper. Ha, nice. It's the tricks you learn. Oh yeah. Okay, that was a bunch of interesting. Are there anything else from the Discord? It's the the or have we covered all the all the comments and questions? I think we've gone through all the Discord and. Uh... Yeah, let's see. Uh, I think there was a question about uh, your mind, your uh, elder brain. Did you make that? Uh, 
I painted it. It's from Just Arch Villain Game. Yeah, it's Arch Villain Games. It's the the where they do well. They do really almost all of the major D and D stuff because well, it sells. It's the, the but they they are very very. I mean, of course, there is nothing wrong with running a business. In fact, if the our model companies, especially small ones, didn't try to succeed, then we wouldn't have much choice. So it's a good thing that they do the popular stuff. But the the arch villain is certainly one of my favorites. Bestiarum is a real John Blanche homage uh, shop. They do tremendously great grim dark miniatures. Uh, big fan of them. It's the a uh, lot of the print. There's quite a few things that I like. It's the Lost Kingdom too. Yeah, and uh, I think it's great that uh, with so many companies, some of them are getting into the uh, niche stuff too. So uh, you know, there's there's always more uh, more variety. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of them are big enough now. It's the, the that they can the, the sort of not obviously be as big as something like GW. It's the but big enough that there there is quite a, quite a large range. Yeah, but it's always nice that there's space for uh, smaller companies in the uh, in the market. Well, if if that was all, then the only thing I'd say that the the check out the Trench Crusade the the on Facebook is good place as any to follow it. We uh, we do post in Instagram. Mike Francina does that, and the, the we have Twitter. But we put every week like a big update post on it. It's the you can find my, my me Thomas Piren Brutal Deluxe Game Design is the online if you want to follow what I'm doing. It's the and if you have something to ask, it's the ask away. It's the the i I don't bite. I might not always answer. I do get a lots and lots of messages, and sometimes stuff just gets lost. It's the oh I am so busy that I say okay I'll answer tomorrow, but then there is hundreds. <laughs> so but it isn't. I'm not. I very rarely ignore people more than just a matter of that there, there are not enough hours in a day so yeah, but but the, the, i appreciate everybody who, who, who pings me yeah i mean uh just uh seeing from your activity on the uh mordheim uh, page you tend to be very available to help people so uh definitely yeah yeah i mean I often like they ask a most rule questions are actually quite straightforward people ask is, is this as rules as written i said yep it's, rules as written. <laughs> it's exactly as it reads in the book because this is actually one last point is that hmm? there are obviously times when I wish I would have written a rule differently. But when people ask me a ruling, then I tend to go always with the rules as written. Because imagine you are a new player and you come to the hobby and you read the Mordheim book and you prepare your warband. And then you come and play and then your opponent has this list of questions from the designer that completely changed the game. Uh, and they've built their force around it and then you lose you feel really bad so i think everybody as far as possible everybody should have as equal footing on a neutral game just use the rules as written once you have a gaming group do house rules as much as you want but the the it is important i think that even if the rules as written could use revise uh, should be revised is that there are things that i would change in more hunter obviously but the the uh it is not fair to the global community for me or anybody else to just make up rulings that completely change the game to what it was written because the new it's much harder for new people to get in because what do they read then yeah it makes a lot of sense yeah okay so Tom, uh, Thomas, thank you very much. This was really appreciated and uh, it was great fun talking to you. Okay, excellent. It's still, let's do it again sometime. Thank you. Well, lovely. I mean, once you release Trench Crusade or... Uh, yeah, Trench or Crusade. Tactical, I'll just, 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 the, the, yeah, let's do it with, once we're getting live. It's the, the let's do the, the, the let's play Trench Crusade or go through the rules. It's the, Ooh, the, the, right. <laughs> there seems to be a fair amount of excitement in the community, so I would love to share. Loved it. All right. Okay. So thank you. Th thank you so much and uh, thank you for, for watching everyone and uh, have a good week. Bye bye. Bye.